earlier this week on Wednesday, uh, Donald Trump uh, tweeted that the transition is going so smoothly, um, I guess, uh, to assuage concerns because the transition is not going smoothly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's w one of the things that occurs to me is that we have really um, two or three major disasters that are involved and in potential disasters with the Trump um, the Trump presidency. One is what I call the Mike Pence version. Even if Donald Trump was to disappear tomorrow and Mike Pence was to become president, we would still have a, well, and, and particularly with Mike Pence, it's another ilk. I mean, this is a, a, a he's a huge uh, fundamentalist. We would have well, close to a theocracy, but we would still have a, a conservative dominated government, Republican dominated government that will mean everything from the destruction of our social safety net, the destruction of our social insurance, the uh, the uh, erosion of our regulatory state, uh, the diminishment of, uh, of 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 rights of, in particularly uh, women, but across the board. I mean, just to name a few things. But with Donald Trump, we also have the single least experienced and perhaps most emotionally unstable president in, at the very least, a century, I would argue probably about 150 years. Uh, and he has appointed so far, in terms of his, uh, you know, what we know and is his staff, uh, people who have no experience in government, even uh, Reince Priebus has experience only as a political operative in the Republican Party. No one who has any sense of what each part of the executive branch does. It is, um, we're in a very precarious situation here. Well, what, let me ask you this. Uh, yeah, we are. <laughs> Most, uh, every, everything you just said had to be said, but it, I think at this point, after this last week, we... Most of it goes without saying when we start looking at these appointments. Uh, it's, you know, John Bolton, really. Uh, gee, Newt Gingrich, uh, Rudy, Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of guesswork at this point. I think people came into this and they, you know, people are optimistic. They want to be optimistic. They don't want to, you know, they, they don't want to freak out too long for no good reason. And, but the, the truth is, right now, um, there I'm not seeing anything that says, "Gee whiz, we were we were wrong." Uh, is there? Before we go on, is there anything you're seeing? Because I don't I don't want this to be a, just a repeat of what we talked about in in the lead up to the election. But right now, are you seeing anything that you go, "Wow, maybe we were wrong because of blank"? Um, and wrong in terms of what Donald Trump is is going to do uh, with the country. Yeah. I mean, yeah. um, uh, no, uh, I don't think that there is anything uh, that is uh, I think that we were anticipating. I mean, at this point, you know, although I will say this, that I think the idea if you had said I think it's worse, frankly, at this stage. And, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, but I think it's worse at this stage in some respects than. I think we had the imagination to contemplate mm. prior to the election. Yeah, that is and, disturbing. And I'll, that's, that's, and I'll tell you why you I say that. that. Very mm -hmm. Because, you know, you have someone like Frank Gaffney, who is a, a, a lunatic crank neocon uh, who uh, sees uh, the Muslim Brotherhood not only uh, has infiltrated the U.S. government, but even folks like Grover Norquist. And this guy is part of the transition team ostensibly to look at, I guess, national security issues. Um, you know, we have uh, a, a white nationalist uh, anti-Semite uh, who is a special advisor to uh, Donald Trump. There's no, uh, look, there's, there's, no, there's no confirming this guy. There's no nothing. Uh, we have seen already the aggressiveness of the Trump family to um, exploit the the presidency for money. Yeah. I mean, these type of things like I thought. Like, uh, OK, well, well, you understand what I wanted to do. I, I really wanted to start the program by saying, is there anything we missed? And when I had to think about it, uh, probably not. Maybe I've got something, you know, something that we have some hope for. 
But I, I think as I listen to you, I, I really want to start out. I just want to listen to you what your take on it was and see if, well, gee whiz, there's something that I really, uh, that I really disagree with you on. I, l- let me tell you one thing that, that I don't know whether this has any legs or not. But, you know, there was early on some discussion by Trump about the infrastructure in the United States. You remember that? We, you know, we, yep. Obama's done a terrible job. Obama's in, f- for the most part, he's right where it comes to the infrastructure. We, we, we've just not moved ahead really at all. Uh, the early days of Obama, you might recall, we said, uh, look, uh, President Obama, you have two years now. You've got the House. You've got the Senate. You can do some wonderful things. And one of the major topics that I remember talking about was the infrastructure. Because if you take control of the infrastructure, we can pull ourselves out of this dismal abyss that we're looking at from the uh, from from the housing burn down. We can move the economy again. And uh, again, like Obama has become so famous for, he gave a great speech about it, two great speeches about it. And then nothing happened. All right. We had a stimulus. There was a couple hundred million dollars as part yeah. of that stimulus, uh, but it was not nearly it, it, enough. Not, it, was, it, it was almost a joke, okay? The real issue for stimulus was build roads, build, rid- build bridges, build new airports, uh, take care of our dams, take care of our water supply, take care of our, uh, our, our uh, infrastructure in every regard. There was no activity. Now, what I let me just juxtapose that and and talk about Trump from a standpoint of a guy that has spent more money than got more loans, been bankrupt more than most people, uh, you know, four bankruptcies, but he nevertheless is willing to go out and get big loans. Now, you've got an interest rate right now that uh, is historically low. It's going to stay low for a while. My prediction. Now is the time for him, isn't it, to say, okay, well, let's put some bonds out there. Let's go to Saudi Arabia, these people that are want to remain our friends, and let's let's sell them some bonds, and let's let's put together a couple trillion dollars, paid off over fifty to hundred years, and let's build our infrastructure. Now, if you're Saudi Arabia, you're saying that's a great idea because the the American economy is the engine for the world economy. Okay. Well, now, and what I'm saying is. Obama, I mean, uh, 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 Trump is talking, What was talking about it early on. Where is that now? Are you hearing any discussion about, I'm going to go, first thing I'm going to well, do is deal with this infrastructure problem? I'll tell you, I mean, he's floating it. We don't know yet. I mean, I think they're in such disarray there. But later in this program, I'm going to talk to David Dayan about that infrastructure program, because it's not quite as cracked up as to what it, uh, as what it sounds like. TheRingOfFire.com. Honest, hard-hitting news, free from corporate influence. Your destination for progressive news, commentary, and interviews. TheRingOfFire.com. 